This is Twit. Doc Rock, you're throwing out your GoPros, you're throwing out all your DSLRs, you're getting rid of the Canon, the Nikon, the Sony. It's all Apple iPhone all the time, right? Uh, you first dumpster dive party at Doc every, Rock's house. <laughs> you're yes, swearing at me with all those words except Sony. Um, <laughs> I'm a Sony guy too. I know what you mean. So, so yeah. So here's why this is a big deal. Um, I'm I'm an ecam guy, right? I teach ecam on my stream. I tell everybody if you just want to start, it's the easiest way yep. to do it. Yep. One of the coolest features of ecam is you can just plug in an iphone and it immediately works so if you want to start and you have no other cameras but your iphone the fact that you can just cable it up right away with the standard lightning cable and you're good to go is amazing now you take that and you add in this new camera you add in this hdr 10 bit on the fly shooting oh my goodness now tell you're me because tell me what that means as a, as incredible a, stuff as a videographer they said, and to me, this sounded amazing, 60 frame per second, 4K, HDR, 10-bit with Dolby Vision. Now, that's five buzzwords in there, but all at the same time, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So uh, your, bit def your bit definition covers a bunch of different things, and primarily... Uh, we're looking at dynamic range and we're talking about dynamic range on all the levels of the bits, right? So one of your fours is your RGBs. One of your fours is the hues, uh, saturation and luminance, right? One of your fours is based off of depth color. Um, basically, you know, it, it's your dynamic range, right? Your shadows and your highlights and things like that. So right? the more bits you store, the more information about the scene you're storing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so therefore you have more ability to when you go to edit said photo or edit said video, you have more that you're working with. This is why we all love raw. So when you're shooting in, say, uh, video raw on, on any camera or things like the black magic camera and stuff like that. Wait a minute. Wait you, a minute. Wait a minute. It's still compressed, right? You can't shoot raw video. It, for the iPhone, it will be compressed. It yeah, has if it to was be. straight raw video, is it four four four? Yeah, no, no, no. You wouldn't have the room yeah. for it. Yeah, it, it that that itself it will burn out. So right. it is going to probably be in the HEIC Kodak or the XAVC Kodak, which is still somewhat. But these compressed. are very good. Though. But you, these are good Kodaks oh, yes. now. Yeah. You watch it all day, every MP5, day. MP five. Yeah, you don't even think about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. We're we're beyond the days of squishing something down uh, or squiz, as my friend Diana would say, <laughs> squizzing things down to, you know, like the MP3, uh, original MP3 format. Right. And it just sounds right. like rubbish. I mean, right. we're at a whole different game and space with compression and things like that now. And the fact that for the most part, you could take what is the proxy footage out of, you know, a Sony camera, how you can shoot dual mode. You could take the proxy footage, edit it, and throw it up online, and nobody would even notice. Nobody yes. would care. Yes. They'd be like, oh, this is great. So, yes. like, to be able to do this with an iPhone, though, I mean, bro. I wish I could return yeah. my GoPro I just got. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. the hero, whatever, you, eight black. You, you can't. You didn't get it from Costco? Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I don't know if I need it anymore. This iPhone, it sounds like, you know what I was waiting for at the end? They didn't do it, but I was waiting for Apple to say, and by the way, this entire presentation was shot on iPhone. Uh, but they didn't yeah. do that. No. That that um, video, and you know, okay, let's get this straight, people. Do not get it twisted. You're not going to get your iPhone home and shoot what they shot there. <laughs> okay. The number, one, okay. <laughs> the number one thing that they have that you do not have, okay, you can buy an OM4 or as an Osmo Mobile 4. You can buy a movie, a Cinema Robot. You can get that balance. You can get all of that covered. But they're bringing 10K light, you know. Uh... They're bringing big HDMI light, right? So even the stuff that they shot at night, there's probably some practical light somewhere okay. to give it that extra boost. Yeah. But you can do that. Right now, Prime Day, if you don't buy anything and you're into video creation, buy lights. Don't buy anything else. Everything else is not going to help you. Light is boom. Like this light right here that gives me the, all of this, you know, Je ne sais quoi, you know, that's like a $1,500 <laughs> light. But it's wow. because when you go to stream, it looks good, right? Yeah. You can make this old ugly dude look good. Yeah. So – that and that Boston hat, come on. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm really excited. I mean, that's one thing. And I have to say at this point, with, with Google kind of 
you know, they they left the image processing hardware out of the, the Pixel 5. I feel like they're, in effect, kind of saying, yeah, go ahead, Apple. And and you could say, well, what about Samsung? Samsung has a lot of capability, but they are very opinionated about what they do to your photography. And I think <laughs> unless you like that Samsung look, it is not a natural uh, look. What the iPhone is going to give you is the best, most realistic Photos. They're supporting. Some, by the way, this is some uh, video on the on the website. There's no point in me streaming it at 720p, highly compressed. Go look at it at the, at the website. If you were able to, if you have an Apple TV uh, 4K and you have a 4K TV, I'm I would I'm gonna go home and watch the event on 4K because I think you'll see a lot. That's better. That's how I watched it. Yeah. Because I, I, I was I was working in the living room. I did not I did not anticipate it being as cinematic as it was. It's gorgeous. And boy, did the photo and did the photo and video demos <gasps> really hit home on a 4K 60 inch H, uh, HDR TV? It's the first they say first camera ever to record in Dolby Vision. That's an HDR format, but playback it supports all three HDR formats. Uh, I don't I don't think any other phone uh, does that. The iPhone uh, 11 was 8-bit HDR. This is 10-bit HDR. Uh, Dolby Vision is, you know, uh, stunning. The screen now, they're even calling it an XDR screen to kind of emphasize that you're going to get the, the brightness. I, the, the, the nits were super high. The resolution, almost 500 pixels per inch. And you're going to get the HDR. So you're going to look at that screen and you're going to see what you shot and it's going to look fantastic. I think this is an amazing uh, uh, camera. I think Apple Apple is now making perhaps the best, certainly the best phone camera out there. And I suspect that it's a camera that's going to compete even with DSLRs. They're offering something now called Pro Raw, or will be, which gives you all of the bits off the sensor. That's the raw part, but also yeah. saves the computational data. The uh, Fusion Engine, all the app, Apple image Depth data, yeah, yeah from the pipeline LiDAR and data, which means, and it with uh, you know, obviously you're going to have to get an app that'll support this. I'm sure Apple's will. Makes you wonder if they should have kept Aperture around. Although they did point out that Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, will support it. I imagine Lightroom will support it. That's yeah, Luminar. You think Luminar will do it? I hope so. Skyrim oh, yeah. will do those, it. Those yeah. boys are super, super quick. And then on the iPhone, you can know right away that Pro Camera. And I have to give a shout out to Umi Workshop, who's in the chat. He's their designer for that. Makes all the buttons look cute. Oh. Um, that that Pro Camera app is already one of the dopest apps for the iPhone. So be able to do Photo Raw with that app. You're going to be <sighs> basically like having a mirrorless camera. And I Apple mean, did say we cool. have there is a kit. There's an there. We will expose all of the features of this camera so third party camera apps can use it. This is going to be the first real head to head uh, of Google's philosophy and making a camera versus Apple's philosophy and making a camera. The, the previous like czar of uh, Google uh, photography, who just recently Mark left Lavoie. Google, and went to, yeah. Thank you very much, and, and went to and went to Adobe. Gave a long interview after he he, uh, he uh, I think it within Gadget. I think I could be wrong, uh, but which he's ta he's talking about like well, hey, well, but why does like why have you guys why is Google used the same uh, image process, image chip for the past two or three years? Uh, image sensor for the past two or three years from Sony, and he said, "Well, look, at some point, the the, the pixels that we're getting are going to be as good are, are as good as they're going to get. Uh, we not we're not going to make the mistakes of other makers and we try to put try to make the pixels smaller because that will result in more data, but more garbage data. And the philosophy that we've always had that we think that has paid off is we're going to make more better we're going to make better calculations based on getting great data from each pixel that we actually have. And so it's not that because there have not been any real revolution or revolutions in sensors lately, it's just not worth us putting our, our money and style into that. And to be frank, uh, if when I go through my I, I test lots of cameras, I test lots of I've tested every iPhone when I scroll back through at least Instagram, which I realize is not like the portfolio level uh, image viewer. It's very, very it's at times it's very, very hard for me to see the difference between something that I shot on my Pixel version one, which was my daily carry until like two or three months ago and a phone that was made this year and cost two or three times as much mostly because i think a lot of it is because this the four or five four-year-old phone is running like uh 2020 versions of google's image right. processing software right. but the great thing but the thing that really got my interest because yeah, I, I really am a uh, <laughs> my an enthusiastic amateur photographer let's say uh and uh 
the things that I was seeing in all these descriptions was really, really good. For one thing that, hey, look, we've got a bigger image sensor. Not that, hey, we've got a 40 megapixel image sensor, but again, we we have bigger Same pixels. Same 12 megapixel, but they're 1.7 microns now. Right. They're, so they're much they bigger. gather more light, as you said, Doc Rock, F1.6 on uh, the much wide much, angle. Much larger aperture. And 65 the, the, millimeter on the telly. Yeah. 60. Yeah. Five on a phone. And, and that's well. So it's interesting because that's a fifty-two millimeter lens, but they have two point five x optical zoom Correct. on the lens. Yeah. They also have optical image stabilization. I mean, this is something Sony became famous right. for. Yeah. This is built into the camera. This is, this is, uh, and by the way, deal. the features are now part of the selfie cam. So in yeah, the past, you've given up a lot of side and everything. Yeah. yeah, you've given up a lot of stuff to get that selfie. Not anymore. You got deep fusion. You got smart HDR. You, yeah. you got night mode. You got Dolby Vision recording on the yeah. on the selfie cam. But could, could, if, I don't want to leave you out, out, Rosemary, because okay, okay. Uh, we we've got these two camera guys over here getting all excited. <laughs> Three, maybe if you include me. Do you use? Do you take pictures? Oh, you're muted. Poor Rosemary. She got so <laughs> bored with this. She went off and got a cup of coffee. Go ahead. Tea. Did, tea. Or, or maybe we're we're talking over so much that we actually psychically turned off her microphone from remote from from where we were. We're sorry. We've lost you, Rosemary. Uh, no, I sneezed and I stood on my oh. cough switch to sneeze. Um, so that I wouldn't deafen you and then forgot. Um <gasps> <laughs> so I take a lot of photos, actually, uh, especially the last couple of weeks. My dad's been redecorating my place. So I've taken loads of photos Aww. of all of the work that he's done so I could show my grandparents and everything, you know, Aww. like what, what we've been up to. Um, and I don't really know a lot about photography. I did have a digital SLR at one point and learned how to use it. And that was fun. But lurking that around was too much work. Well, And I think so. you're the person they're aiming at. Somebody who says, I'm not a camera buff, but look at these pictures. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I know enough about the camera stats to look at it and go, that's good, especially a telephoto lens. Like, I, I actively try to avoid zooming on digital photos oh, God, because I, you digital, are just copying the pictures. Yeah, yeah, it's um, terrible. And yeah. so, I, I much prefer, like, you know, I got, I got the pro because I wanted that telephoto lens again. Um, I wasn't willing to give that up for the ultra wide. I find that I do use the ultra wide more than I was thinking, but I use telephoto more than I use ultra wide. So I am going to be getting pro again purely for that. Just And I'm going for the max because it does have a better camera. It also has better battery life and a couple of other things that I wanted. Um, but, you know, it, 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 you know, it has that camera and that's the selling point for a lot of people. Um, you know, they walk into a store looking to get a phone and somebody shows them the amazing photos that you can take and they'll buy it. Just to be clear, yep. the Pro Max and Pro have the same camera features, right? Uh, no, yes, Max uh, has... yes and no. Oh, the Max has more? Yes. Yeah. So, for instance, the uh, the Pro's uh, focal length is 52 Vice 65 and then it's 1.4 microns versus 1.7 microns. Oh, so and I, I want that bigger the, sensor is what I want. Right. So the ultra wide and stuff is the same. But other than that, that's where you're going to get your changes mm. is going to be, you know, the the ultra. I mean, sorry, the telephoto lens. And then, of course, the uh, pixel size. But to your point, Leo, what you said about Rosemary's case is 100% true. It's the people that I don't need to know about camera because the camera does it for you. Yeah. And that's always yeah. been Apple's maneuver, right? I'm going to just, these are the dope pictures you're looking for. <laughs> I was, can I, can I shout out, uh, maybe, again, I benefited from having watched it live on a, on a 4K HDR display, uh, that I, one of, one of the demo pictures that really blew me away was they had a, they had a portrait of uh, a person with very, very dark skin, number one. Number two, oh, wasn't very, the, I, very, that stair very, shot. Very, very, very oh. high, very, very high contrast too. So the, yeah. so the camera side, uh, side of their face was in shadow, and yet it was pulling lots of detail oh. from that shadow. And this is this was I don't know if this was a specific flex because it's a, it's a known fact that the because the engineers behind uh, uh, image sensors have historically been white people. It's optimized to That's make sure right. that it takes really good pictures of white people. And That's when you right. try to take pictures of people uh, of color, the results can be very, very variable. So I, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't a flex because they, uh, they were, they were very, very happy to have portraits of a very wide diversity of people around there. But I thought that was a very, very well chosen image. Um, I, I did, I did want to say, but I did, I did when we were talking about the image stabilization, one thing they mentioned that absolutely caught my full attention is that this 
is not the first uh, iPhone by a long shot that has optical image stabilization, but they've Pixel switched shift. to a yes, uh, yeah. sensor shift, right? Sensor so shift, they're yeah. actually so and what uh, so basically the actual silicon sensor moves around, and they said with 5,000 micro adjustments per second, being able to give you a two-second stabilized handheld. That's all great, but I couldn't help but remember my. Uh, uh, the camera that I bought five years ago, the Olympus OMD EM1, uh, which I still love, I use uh, I use every single day or every single week. Uh, it had it also had being being a professional camera. It also had sensor shift uh, sensor shift five axis stabilization. And a year later, I it they uh, Olympus gave me a free firmware update that would let me take let the 16 megapixel sensor take 40 to 50 megapixel landscape pictures because and this is technique has been used on a lot of different cameras where uh, engineers figured out that wait a minute if we have the ability to make micro to move this image sensor in micro little adjustments uh, uh, on our whim that means that we could take the, the original 12 megapixel picture if it's locked down on a tripod, then shift that sensor over just a bit so we can capture some of the information that was between those two pixels and then shift it up a little bit and capture some more information that was between all the pixels that we took before. And it's not even necessarily pixel bending, which is the way of cheating uh, of cheating a good picture out of a, a high-resolution a high bad one. But you're actually able to pull serious additional detail and realistically functional 20 to 30 megapixels images from a really small sensor now apple didn't even hint at this let alone announce it but i couldn't help but think that if i were if uh, if i were a camera engineer working for apple and i had like my i'm a, I'm a senior camera engineer at apple uh, edition of the iphone 12 pro uh and so i can do whatever it is with this that i want in my off time i would be building a 50 megapixel landscape photography app for this thing and then we would see if we could actually there was we could actually put it into a shipping product but it just uh, and i'm i i'm excited about it because i've just this is this is the day we're only two hours or so outside of the announcement so your my mind at least is full of well geez this could mean this and wow the potential for this is here uh but it's part of what gets me so excited about this camera i mean i'm not i i i actually own uh a, a decent decent enough well actually this is the 350 dollar pixel phone so this, this is not by a top drawer of anything by any means but uh, a few years ago i bought a 500 dollar like panasonic lumix very nice uh, sony image sensor uh, uh pocket camera so that i could still have a camera in my pocket that would take better pictures than even a five or six or eight hundred dollar phone I found myself thinking that if I were going into uh, the AT&T store, the Verizon store, with $700 in my pocket to buy the new iPhone 12 because they said that, oh, I really just want the iPhone 12. Uh, and they and I were to look at this and they were and they were able to convince me of how much better pictures I could take with the pro model for three hundred dollars more. I could easily talk myself into saying, well, you know what, for the past year, you've been thinking maybe I should buy one of those six hundred dollars Sony uh, pocket uh, pocket cameras for when I'm traveling. But I don't want to take my real camera with me or every time I've been disappointed by the cam the, the pictures that uh, that uh, uh, my 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 phone camera has said this would be like getting a camera that for my purposes would be almost as good as that for $300 and without having to carry an extra charger or an extra device. So it, I, I can't wait for people who are actual professionals and actual, uh, their reviews include histograms and scatter charts and lots of things that they have to have the circles and arrows on the back and the paragraph on the back of each one explaining what it is. Uh, I can't wait for the independent testers to see if any of this really, really works because I got the, uh, we, we get we get the whole schmear every single year about how much better this year's iPhone camera is than last year's this was the first time that i think they hit enough bullet points that would catch the attention of any everybody who knows how good pictures result from good hardware said that is boom 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 and suddenly the person who bought a 350 dollars android phone intending it to use it for the next two or three years is like i said at the at the outset you know, as a journalist, it would be irresponsible for me to I'll borrow a phone from Apple and only have it for three months and not being able to give it the rigorous day-to-day, year-into-year testing. <laughs> and the, the, the weasel on your shoulder that says, it costs $1,000. Well, I have $1,000. I'm going to make another thousand dollars, like not not match. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'll 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 be under I'll be under contract. Slap the cuffs on me, AT and T. I'll be under contract for another two years if I can have this phone and tell myself I'm only spending ten dollars a month for eighteen years. Rosemary, you actually made a really good point. I didn't 
realize this. I was thinking, oh, I'll just get the iPhone 12 Pro now because I can get it now. It sounds like uh, it's worth waiting. Uh, yeah, extra for me, for me, I want the Max anyway. So waiting to make sure that I, I get the the yeah. Max with the better camera is, you know, a cherry on top of the cake. Um, and the fact that there's another payday between now and then does that doesn't not hurt. hurt either. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> so.